Okay, so here we have some various chips. These chips, the two main fellas, I'm just going to take this one out of here for the moment. These two chips here are what's known as Matz Co-Processing Chips, or FPU. FPU stands for Floating Point Unit. Now an FPU is very important to an older 3D6 machine because it runs floating point calculations. So basically a standard CPU of the, for example, 8086, 8088, 286, 386SX, 386SL, SLC, 486SLC, 486SLC2, 386DX, or 486SX, they do not have a MATS co-processor or FPU. A standard CPU will basically run MATS insofar as plus, so addition, minus, subtraction, multiplication, the little x, or division, the straight line with the dot on top and the dot on the bottom. However, if you want to do more complicated mathematics, long division, trigonometric functions, roots, and logarithms, for example, that's what you basically need. So where that comes into play is not for playing, you know, your old games. It comes in when you wanted to run something like AutoCAD or Lotus 1, 2, 3. Now, AutoCAD, in most cases, won't even function, won't even turn on. It'll immediately say, Mats processor is not present. Now, naff off peasants, as somebody said in a recent video. Yes, something like that, you know. So you do need it to run those programs. In some cases, the programs will still function. But because the actual CPU doesn't have the higher level functions, it will struggle and it will run very slow. So installing a MATS code processor will allow the machine to run 10 to 100 times faster doing those particular calculations. Okay, one of the misconceptions in relation to MATS code processors is the 386 being disabled when you install the 387 chip. This is incorrect. What it basically refers to is a system that came pre-installed with a 486SX chip. So the code processor you would install onto that will be either a 487SX or a DX2 overdrive chip. The 487SX chip has a built-in FPU. So what this means is the 487SX chip, it's a modified version of the 486DX with the MATS code processor enabled. So basically when you plug in this 487 chip onto your motherboard, it disables the onboard 486SX main processor and it takes over all processing. So that's where that, that basically idea came from, that the 387 did it. It's actually in relation to the 486 version of the chip, not the 386 version of the chip. What quickly happened, however, was it was discontinued at rapid pace in favour of Intel's newer DX2 overdrive CPU. So it just basically got outclassed. The motherboards that had the likes of the 486SX on them, they would have a socket there beside them for the 487SX, or in some cases for an overdrive chip. Now, in saying that, you can, in theory, in most cases, just basically get the original 486SX chip, which I've done myself on a few boards, chuck it in the bin, the bus got and install a 486 with a MATSCO processor. And voila, everything functions correctly. Because at the end of the day, the motherboard is actually well able to understand what a MATSCO processor is, um, so there's no particular issues with that. So when did the code processors disappear? Well, a machine that has a 486DX or above doesn't need a MATS code processor because it's already built in. So for example the DX2, the DX4, the Pentium and so on all have the floating point unit built into them and don't need this MATS code processor to be installed. Okay so when it comes to matching a CPU with the MATS code processor look at the speeds. So you have a 16 megahertz main CPU you must match that with a 16 megahertz FPU. It must be done that way. You can, however, and I've done it myself, where you have a 3D616 match it with a 3D620. It won't make the machine any faster, but the CPU will have no trouble running alongside an FPU that is slightly faster than it. 
where the problem will arise is if I have, let's say, a CPU that's 33 megahertz and my FPU is 20 megahertz. That's where you'll get problems and that's where you don't want to be. Intel had given up on the 386 at around 33 megahertz. However, the AMD company decided that, uh, no, we're going to continue on for a little bit longer and came out with this chip. This is around at the time where the litigation was there that uh, AMD and Intel were fighting in the courts and it was later resolved and AMD and Intel are now great rivals. And it's great because it allows for innovation between the two companies that wouldn't exist if, if they had won the case, basically. Basically, basically. So, AMD was a major player in the 486 compatible chip market with its very own line of Intel compatible 486 chips. That came after this. Like I said, the 486DX chips are the ones to look for, the ones to want. You don't really want the SX chips because you will require a maths code processor for them. So these are some of the earlier generations. The these, this one and this one are 286s. This is a 188. And this chip here was actually manufactured right up until 2007. How about that? That's about 24 years of a life that had. So pretty impressive for a chip using embedded systems. A bit like the 386s where they were used in, in embedded systems and low power. Um, a lot of these chips are quite capable, but uh, as things progress, unfortunately, the chips are no longer able to do what they were tasked to do, and other low-cost, low-power alternatives come along and take over. But, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little trip in relation to maths code processors. Just uh, rule of thumb generally is to match the CPU with the, G with the FPU, but um, if you can't do that, um, it's fairly okay to install a 16 with something higher. Um, I've had no trouble with that in the past. I've only had trouble where I went the other way around. I, as far as I remember, I managed to do it once where I had a 20 with a 16. Well, the machine could become very unstable because I was trying to run that um, GPU, sorry, GPU, did it again, that FPU at a higher rate than it should have been. So it can cause some undesirable effects. So match the CPU with the FPU. GPUs come later on. Um, and uh, thanks for watching the video. And uh, see you again next time.